dear students it is the continuation of the previous lecture video so in this lecture video we are going to cover the acquisition and tracking system in cdma spectrum spreading and despreading concept cdma throughput and finally advantages and applications of cdma okay let's start with acquisition and tracking block in the cdma in cdma at the receiver side this acquisition and tracking block is mainly used to generate the carrier signal which is exactly synchronized with the transmitter carrier signal so then only we can receive or recover the original information signal using coherent detector do you all understand this one so here the input is c of t p of t into cos omega d t okay so here we can multiply this two signals in this multiplier then we can get c squared of t okay so whenever this c of t as well as this c of t both are same then only we can get c squared of t which is equal to 1 then we can simply ignore this code signal from this received signal to get the original information okay so here we are going to use the concept auto correlation property to generate the synchronized m sequence code do you all understand this one so this acquisition and tracking block is very important in this cdma receiver side so here we are having two important operations acquisition operation and tracking operation so these two operations are based on the value vt so what is vt it is the threshold voltage okay it is the predetermined threshold which is required for synchronism so whenever the average voltage in this acquisition block is greater than this threshold voltage then we can select tracking operation if it is less than means we can go with acquisition okay first one is acquisition of the carrier so in this one we are going to use auto correlator block so in this block the first element is multiplier so there are two inputs one is directly from the receiver c of t p of t cos omega d t so the next one is from this auto correlator with a delay c of t minus tau okay so here we can have the first multiplier then we can get the output as c of t multiplied with this c of t minus tau p of t cos omega dt cos omega d means downlink frequency range so next one is bandpass filter so this filter is mainly used to reject the high frequency components from this multiplier so this bandpass filter is going to perform the amplitude averaging operation on this product signal so we can get the output as average signal so the average signal is based on c of t into c of t minus tau because it is going to reject the high frequency component the high frequency means omega d component then we can get only c of t into c of t minus tau at this output point okay the next one is envelope detector so envelope detector is going to detect the outline the envelope of the average signal of c of t into c of t minus tau so it can get only the average voltage value so we have already one threshold value that is predetermined value correct for getting the synchronized value so we are going to compare these two values okay so vt and this average value so whenever this average value is less than this threshold value then we have to go with this time delay and then we can generate the pseudo random noise signal if it is greater than this threshold voltage then we can move on to this tracking system that is based on delay lock loop do you all understand this one so finally we can get the proper synchronized carrier signal at the output of this acquisition and tracking block do you all understand this concept 
so here we can take the output of the first multiplier this is the first multiplier we can get the output as e of t is equal to c of t minus dou into c of t p of t cos omega dt okay so simply we can consider this value as here this p of t is nothing but the information signal along with this downlink frequency concept we can get cos of omega dt plus phi of t phi of t is nothing but the bpsk information signal in this receiver side the output of the multiplier is given to this bandpass filter this bandpass filter has a pass band centered on the downlink frequency omega d so it performs the amplitude averaging operation on the product signal so here we can take this to signal one as the originally received signal the next one is time delayed signal okay so here cos omega d t into cos omega d t minus dou dou is the delay signal then we can use the formula cos a into cos b that is equal to 1 by 2 cos a plus b plus cos a minus b then we can get the value cos 2 omega d t minus dou plus here this two value are cancelled okay so here cos of dou from this we can simply reject the high frequency component that is 2 omega d t and we can consider only the low frequency component that is 1 by 2 cos del okay next envelope detector it detects the envelope of the signal c of t into c of t minus dou so that can be represented as v average okay so the next one is threshold detector here we are going to compare the given average voltage with the threshold voltage so here vt is the predetermined threshold value required for the synchronization so when this average voltage from the envelope detector is less than the threshold then the time delay value is incremented to get the proper carrier frequency okay when the average voltage is greater than or equal to the threshold voltage then the CDMA system switches from the acquisition to the tracking mode. Do you all understand this one? Next, tracking circuit. So here, tracking can be done by using the delay lock loop. So here, we are going to use two correlators. Okay, so one is to advance the time delay by half a chip period, that is TCH by 2. The next one is, delayed by the half chip period so one input to this multiplier is the received signal c of t into p of t into cos omega d into t correct the same is given over here also okay c of t into p of t into cos omega d into t in the previous acquisition we are simply giving the delay signal as c of t minus dou but in this tracking system we are going to use two correlators one is to provide the advanced time delay by tch by 2 that is half a chip period one is delayed by half a chip period these two correlated outputs are subtracted using this adder okay so this provides a control signal e of dou so this will run this vco voltage controlled oscillator which will control the shift register so shift register is going to generate the code waveform correct so in order to produce the synchronized code waveform we have to control this vco okay so here whenever we are going to subtract this to correlated outputs we can get the control signals like this so when the control voltage is present at this zero crossover point so whenever it is present at this zero crossover point then the locally generated code signal is in phase with the received signal that means exactly synchronized with the received signal do you all understand this point so we have to get the same synchronized code waveform by using this tracking system do you all understand this concept so here it is very important to produce the same synchronized carrier signal at the output side so here we are going to use two correlators one is advanced by 
hopper chip period the next one is delayed by the hopper chip period so these two outputs are subtracted to generate the control voltage which will control the voltage controlled oscillator so this drives the shift register clock to generate the synchronized code waveform with the control voltage at zero crossover point the locally generated code signal is in phase with the received code signal in phase means the signal is synchronized with the received code signal so here the cross correlation is also possible but we are not using this concept widely so we are using only the auto correlation property okay so the next one is spectrum spreading and despreading concept so it is very important in this cdma so in cdma the carrier signal is modulated according to the information signal so it will give the bpsk signal at a bit rate rb bpsk means binary phase shift keying signal so that is the first modulation so for a bpsk signal at a bit rate rb the main lobe of the power density spectrum is having the bandwidth from fc minus rb to fc plus rb so here fc is the cut off frequency here it is only based on that bit rate okay so bit rate means it is only for the information signal so without any spreading we are having the initial modulated signal that is nothing but bpsk signal okay without spreading but in cdma it is further modulated by the code waveform so to spread the spectrum over the available bandwidth that is called as spread spectrum okay so here this spreading the spectrum depending on the range rch rch means chip rate which depends on the code signal okay so in this one you can see the range of frequency is from fc minus rch to fc plus rch so here it depends on the chip rate not the bit rate so this is called as spread spectrum so if a signal is forced to spread a wider bandwidth then its spectrum density will be reduced so y axis is the spectrum density it is getting reduced whenever we are going to spread the spectrum so here we can fully occupy the bandwidth for our signal transmission in the transmitter side we are going to spread the spectrum at the receiver side we are going to despread the signal okay in direct sequence spread spectrum the chip rate is much more greater than this bit rate that means the spreading can be done over the entire bandwidth okay so next the effect of this spreading at the receiver side so at the transmitter side we are going to spread the signal over the entire bandwidth so at the receiver side we are going to despread the signal to get the desired information signal so at the receiver side the despreading function is used to a uh, restore the spectrum of the desired signal okay so here while receiving the signal we can get the interfering signal also along with the desired signal so in cdma this is the interfering signal it has not been spread while transmitting through the satellite communication so in cdma this interfering signal has not been spread only the desired signal is spread based on the chip rate okay so this is the desired direct sequence spread spectral signal this is the despread interfering signal at the receiver side so while despreading the signal only the desired signal is restored so here the interfering signal is multiplied by the code signal then the interference is spreading we can get only the desired signal using despreading okay next one is cdma throughput here throughput defines the maximum number of channels in a cdma system so here we can consider the important parameters like number of channels k processing gain 
GP, throughput efficiency eta. So first, the number of channels. So the maximum number of channels in a CDMA system can be estimated using the formula capital K is equal to 1 plus 1 plus rho into GP N0 by EB. So here N0 is nothing but the noise density in terms of watts per hertz. Here EB is nothing but the bit energy. NO is the noise density. Okay, so this noise density can be obtained by using the formula K minus 1 PR by BN. So this BN is nothing but the noise bandwidth. So in this one row, row is nothing but the role of factor. It is nothing but what? The role of factor in this CDMA. Here GP is the processing gain. Okay, so it is defined as the ratio of power density in and spread signal to that in the spread signal. So here we can consider the power density in the and spread signal to the spread signal. It can also be defined as the ratio of chip rate to the bit rate. Chip rate means it is the code rate RB that is bit rate is the information rate. So next throughput efficiency. So it is defined as the ratio of the total number of bits per unit time with respect to transmission rate. So eta is equal to ARB by RT. So RT is nothing but the transmission rate which is equal to the chip rate. As we all know that the processing gain is equal to RCH by RB. So we can replace this RB by RCH as 1 by GP. So here this throughput efficiency can also be defined as the ratio of the maximum number of channels to this processing gain. So it is an important formula to get the throughput efficiency of the CDMA system. So next advantages of this CDMA. So this CDMA is highly resistant to interference as well as multipath noise. Okay, so here the synchronization is not required between the stations. That means any stations can access the system at any time. It depends only on the code waveform. So there is no need for time synchronization. It is highly secured communication. So here small antennas can also be used without any interference. But it has some disadvantages as well. So here the throughput efficiency is low and it is expensive one. So this CDMA is widely used for a cellular system, GPS, subscriber access control, wireless laptop modem etc. Okay.